ko Tatanaki, ko Kareoinga, Maunga, ko Waitara, ko Waikato ngā awa, ko Te Ati Awa, ko Waikato Tainui, ko ngā māha ngā taeri o ku iwi, ko ngā tirahiri tōku hapu. Nei te tahi mo kupuna o te Maunga Titohia me te awa o Waikato, tēnā koutou. So I've had quite a long involvement in talking about and thinking about the revitalisation of Moko Kauai. So in the early 2000s with the group Moko Productions, we did a video called Moko Kauai and we talked to a number of uh, wahine around the motu who uh, ka mau Moko Kauai, ka mau pū Kauai, uh, about their journey as a way of developing some resources for wahine to think, who are thinking about having moko kauai. And so, you know, it's been a nearly a 20-year journey for me, and I was also on my own journey at that time uh, toward moko kauai, which was really inspired by Mahine Kura, Reinfeld, uh, who actually was the one who called me one day and said, it's time, it's time for you to mo uh, pū kauai. So it's been a long journey. Um, and then more recently, a couple of years ago, uh, having a conversation with uh, Ngāropi Cameron and Afina Cameron at Tūtama Wahine o Taranaki around their 30th anniversary and the ways that they wanted to uh, whakanui tērā tau, uh, to uplift and to acknowledge the work and the history of Tūtama Wahine o Taranaki, uh, not only in the 30 years of their existence, but from its conception of the term, from Pariaka, from Te uh, with the phrase, uh, etu tama wahine i te te kore. Uh, and those rangatira uh, who were a part of developing their mission. And so it was kind of all a part of that conversation. And so we came to a point of talking about um, doing an exhibition or doing a publication initially around Moko Kauai and Taranaki. There'd been a number of other books that had been done, uh, but they'd been done primarily with Pākehā photographers. So one of the key things we also wanted was that it would be a Māori photographer and our preference would be a Taranaki wahine photographer. Um, so then we kind of skipped to another time not, not much later when I'm walking on way to the beach and I walk into Tanya. Niva, who was there um, back on a break from her work in Australia. And we had a kind of quick catch up and, a, and, and I said to her, we're thinking about this project, maybe you and Ngāropi and Afina could have a conversation. So that kind of grew from a number of conversations around developing uh, what has now become this exhibition. Um, <clears throat> We just had a talk really around the term, just here, around the term pū kauai. The exhibition is called pū kauai. And uh, I'd said to Ngāropi, where did the term pū kauai come from? Uh, because in our video, we had used the word moko kauai, and that's what I'd always come to know. And I guess in a contemporary way, that's uh, kind of possibly a contemporary use, moko, in terms of tāmoko, and kauai chin. So that may be a more contemporary term. So pū kauai, she said, was gifted by Rangi Kepa. And it just felt right um, that a tohunga tāmoko would gift the name, a tohunga tāmoko who has done many of the, the moko in this exhibition. Um, <clears throat> so what we see here, I think, is an exhibition that celebrates wahine who are connected to tūtama wahine o Taranaki, and therefore it celebrates Taranaki. It celebrates kauai, it celebrates our tūpuna, it, it revitalises our taonga, uh, tukuihō, uh, after a period of time when we really saw it around the maunga. I know growing up around Taranaki, I, I don't recall seeing kauai, or kauai, pū kauai. So it's a long answer to your question, but it's all part and parcel, I think, of why... You know, I'm committed both to Tūtama Wahine o Taranaki and to this kind of mahi, this revitalisation mahi. So I've had my, my koe for about 18, around about 18 years, and it was in a time I, when there were a whole range of things happening around the maunga and around the motu in terms of revitalisation of koe. And as I said, in 2002, we decided to do a video uh, around exploring some of the reasons 
and the processes that Wahine Māori took, uh, Pūkauai. And that really was a lot to do with, with who, well, I had heard what I thought was a lot of mythology around Kauai. A lot of things around, if you don't speak fluently in Te Reo Māori, you, don't have, you can't have Kauai. If you are not given permission, you can't have Kauai. And a whole lot of things that were more barriers to actually the revitalization of Moko Kauai. I believe Moko Kauai is a fundamental right of every Wahine Māori. Every Wahine Māori it is ours. It's a taonga from our tupuna wahine. It is ours as a right. We don't have to prove that we should wear it. If we wish to wear it, and, and within our whanau, uh, we have those conversations. I think we do have to have those conversations, but we don't need permission. And so we did that video to debunk some of the mythologies. Uh, <clears throat> and so it was in that context. Also know around that time in the early 2000s, there were wānanga happening with huirangi and others around the, around the, the maunga, uh, with groups of wahine uh, having a series of wānanga around uh, moko kauai. There were also the motiatea wānanga that were happening. So was a whole lot of things were happening at the same time. Um, I finished my study, my doctoral research, which is on looking at mana wahine as a theory of thinking about the world. And when I had completed that and graduated, mahine could have rang and said, you know, it's time for you to do this. And I said to her, to do what? <laughs> Actually knowing what she was talking about. And really for me, it wasn't, there wasn't any going back. She said, it's time for you to take kauai in line with the kaupapa that you've been doing. Uh, and we went on a journey then with uh, Christine Harvey, no Ngāti Mutunga, no Taranaki. Uh, and Christine um, was also doing a journey at that time with um, Huinga Ngutu, Winera, for her kauai. And she was the first moko kauai that Christine did uh, here in Te Hawira. And I remember her, when that kauai was done, thinking, we do not have a living memory of this in Taranaki of a uh, moho, moho kauai being done on a wahine no taranaki and the tohunga tāmoko is also a wahine no taranaki and, and, and we didn't have a li living memory of that and for me it was really important that we began to document more of that. So Christine was also part of the original video we did walking us through the process uh, and since then she's done many others and when we look around this exhibition we see a range of tohunga tāmoko in this exhibition, um, and we see wahine, tohunga tāmoko, and we see tāne. Uh, and I think that's the power of where we're at now. So really, uh, in some ways, I didn't have a choice. It was actually something I did, because ko tohu tohu e iahau, a kia mau tēnei taonga o ngā mātua tūpuna. I haere au ki taku pāpa, uh, uh, kia kōreo atu ki aia, e me atu au ki aia uh, e ki mai a māhine kura, me mau pūkau ai koe e nai anei o tēnei tau. Uh, e, e, e ko tana fa, uh, kōreo mai ki au, tana whakautu mai ki au. Au, oh, pai tērā. E ki atu au ki aia, ka reo e hara mai ki te pātai atu ki a koe, ka hara mai au ki te ki atu ki a koe. E ki mai au, oh, pai tērā. He, to, you know, he tohu wahine tēnei, uh, kei a hau te, te whakatau. I want to talk about decolonisation because a lot of the barriers that have occurred over the past 200 years to all of our wahine wearing pūkauai now has actually been a result of colonisation. Uh, some in really indirect ways, the ways that they talked about our wahine, and others in really direct ways. So in the suffrage movement, in order to be a part of that, that movement as a wahine Māori, you had to sign a commitment to not having moko kauai. So that's a very direct way in which barriers happened, and then there were many indirect ways in which it happened. And so I think that for my generation, we were raised seeing moko kauai in Lindau's and Goldie's, and they were queer, and we never saw any wahine who weren't the wahine or kuya 
with Kowai. And so I think we got into this idea of thinking you have to be old and wise and all of these other things, which they were, uh, to take Moko Kowai. Um, and so decolonizing that thinking is really important. And coming back to when Ngāpapi said decolonization, decolonization is about coming back to ourselves, that when we come back to ourselves, then, then the next part of a of that journey is the revitalization of our own tikanga. The decolonization is about the clearing of the colonial thought. You know, the the tikanga revitalization is about the reclaiming of what is ours, and they go hand in hand at the moment um, because they need to. So, my you know my position and what I would say, and I know many disagree with this, but men are here. Why need Maori queer? He tohu tēnei māi, mai nā mātua tūpuna, mai te kore ki papa tūanuku, ki hene ahone, ki hene tītama, hene nui te pō, a tainoa ki a mātou i roto i te ao mārama nei. So it's our right to, to mau pū kauai, it's our right to walk with kauai. And now, when I first had my kauai, done that many years ago, I would go out to places and then maybe one or two, you know, one or two. I was just in the Manawahine hearings in Kirikiri and Tūranga Waiwai and, you know, nearly half the room of Wahine in that space, Mokowai. So our journey is still ongoing, uh, but it's a really important uh, journey. And who can we thank for that? Who can we thank for this? For the re-emergence of kauai, ourselves, our fano, our hapu, our iwi, our, our tohunga tāmoko that have been brave enough to bring this forward again in the context when often they were told not to. You know, this is a kaupapa Māori movement and so we can thank ourselves. And the important thing is to continue the transmission into the next generation. Tēnā koutou.